Hello guys, I really want to show you something really really cool which I use a lot in my production and it's vocal synths. They give you that alien vibe and touch to your track and I think they really improve your track in a kind of like it makes it more human or alien. <laughs> This is a new track I'm working on on my stream. So I don't put it like a live stream, but I put it in my members area. Um, so if you're a member of mine, you can basically watch how I create this track more or less from scratch. I'd already had the brainstorm and I do the arrangement. I do all the small transitions, bits, mixing, whatever it needs to finish that track. Um, I will stream it in my channel for my members. So if you're already a member, you're lucky you can watch the whole uh, series, uh, how we got so far. And if you're not a member, then become a member because then you can watch it and take it for your own production. And there's actually three synths in the track, um, which have one thing in common. And let's listen to them. They are all different, but they have one thing in common and it's the alien voice. And that's what we're gonna create today. But I want to show you kind of like different applications of that. So it's that beep beep and then comes down boom boom boom. That's kind of like that alien thing in there. And then we have it here in 81. This is the SQ Caveman. It's a preset from my uh, mini bank I put on my gum road. So if you have that, you can also check it out in more detail. Um, it's like that. So the last one is from a pack from Dash Glitch. It's uh, called Mars Attacks, I think that lead. And actually that's how I will name this track and where I will get my vocals from. So um, thank you Dash for the inspiration for that one. And I'm not sure if I modified it or not. I, I think I modified it, but I think the key thing was already in there. Um, it's this one. <laughs> So that's what we're gonna create today. We wanna create an alien vocal synth. So keep watching till the end and then we will have a really cool new alien vocal synth. We do one from scratch. So now let's create our crazy alien synth. I brought the init preset from Serum here. And then the first step we will select our oscillators and uh, we will go with the basic shapes for now. So we'll just start with a saw wave. And we will add a second layer, a square wave to it. Yeah, that sounds fat. Um, we will check if we need random face here. I think it sounds strong of out. Uh, whenever we turn random face down, we should also check the face positions. I think we get a strong sound with that combination uh, of those two shapes right now here. The next thing is we will add a band pass filter here. So we choose band 24 and we really want to drive that sound into distortion. So here boost the signal into the filter feedback, adding a nice distortion. So that's what we want. Yeah, that sounds fat. So now we have like a fat sound, but we need to have it more resonant as well. And now we want to have some movement in the filter. So basically we want to have our filter moving. And for that we will pick a nice sequence. So this one, something like which doesn't have too many gaps and stuff in that I would choose. Let's try different ones. And we want to have less fast because the sequence has a lot of points. So it's probably 16. Okay. 
Let's click through. That's something we could uh, use here. Even a bit more drive. Yeah, that's that's really nice. I think from from moving it. We're still kind of like having a lot of like low frequency content in here. That's what we want to treat now. We want to make it like more interesting and the key concept to this whole sound, uh, this kind of like vocalish sound is distortion and a special type of distortion actually. So the best one is downsampling. You want to have something like bit reduction style of sound. So if you put that up, you can really see that kind of like square things in here. So let's put that in. And then you can really start like hearing those vowel sounds. I would say I perceive like a little bit of like an E-ish sound here or or like A, A, E, E, I thing. So that's actually what we want to get from this downsampling. We'll put it like really high here. And we can add like a pre or post filter to accentuate this even, to bring out those frequencies which shape the sound. If you have a filter like this here, um, you always need to take care because it, I mean, you're creating new sounds with that downsampling, which will add highs in here, which we come later to. But you're also cutting away stuff, and if you, especially if you're having that high mixes. So we will really need to take care of that filter, what we want, and we will cut the lows here. You see, it's kind of really losing stuff here. Yeah, we get a really nice distorted digital robotic sound from that, yeah. And now I should shape this a bit more out. So um, still, I think the, the filter automation could be better here. So let's bring a little bit of pluckiness in here. We'll go back to this. Down here we don't get anything. I think over here is nice. So now you can see that all those here are generated through that distortion. which is actually the key credential for our alien sound. Then let's add a second LFO, which we use to gate the sound here. Same here. I'm moving a bit too fast. Maybe we really, really want to shape that on our own. I have the feeling that this makes so much change here that we really need to take care of that.
Yeah, I think we got now a good combination from the filter movement. And the distortion here. So, so now we have our basic sound and we need to widen it a bit, make it like shine in the room. Yeah, let's put that hyper dimension in here. I quickly brought the chain from the from my project. So basically all it contains is like an EQ because that sound has like a lot of the lows and the highs. So if we look into that, you can see I will turn everything one time off so that you can see what it does. We're reducing this point here a little bit. Flatten it out and increasing this Then we put a delay on it, a ping pong delay. And some compression. As the sound has like a lot of uh, dynamic range here. Also dial it a bit back here. Something like that. I think it's cool. So that's basically, that's basically the raw thing of that sound. So we have this fat sound in the beginning. We send it through a filter. We drive it a lot into the filter to get the distortion. We move that filter to make it a little bit less static. And then the key element of that vocal sound is the distortion here. We use the down sampling and um, go with like a drive like around the middle but very high mix to get that kind of like vocalish sound which we'll look deeper in a moment and we accentuate the frequencies here with those uh, with that filter. Actually what we can also do is we can pre-EQ it and check if we can improve it. Yeah, that's cool, I think. We can also check if we... Yeah, I think like that, like that, it's cool. Um, if, we, if we boost a few of those frequencies here because it really drives it even more into that distortion here and from there let's listen let's listen quickly one time with the bass again mm, we got still a very highish sound maybe we try to move this a bit down Yeah, this takes shape, um, but I'm still not very happy with the outcome here. Yeah, I guess if we want to have it a little bit more mysterious, we go down here in the drive. If we want to have it a little bit more high. The same we can do with that. So let me quickly assign this. Uh, B directional. So we can either push until the sound gets in. I'll go down here a bit. But it will change mostly if we also do this uh, with the drive here. 
and that's in that way no let's do it like that doesn't need to have the perfect range What else can we do? We can also still add some reverb and we can also mangle a bit with the stereo field. So I will put this MSED here. It's free from Voxengo, so you can basically adjust mids and sides. I mean, if you care about this, you can check the correlometer. I don't care so much about it, to be honest. I would push it more to the sides to make it like wider, more fat. Depends a bit on what you use it. Like main lead, I would have more centered and something like that, a more effect kind of type of lead, I would put more to the side. Then let's add some reverb to it. This cool, the the C was cool. So what I usually like on those A B plugins, you can take like A B here, then you go B, you A B them, and then you always choose a winner. It's like hot or not. So this is more clear. I guess the, the other one I would use if I would use that sound in the intro maybe, but now for this concept, I would rather use something like this. Yeah, that's already pretty cool. Now let's check if we can even kind of like make it more funky. It's cool, the flanger. This, I think, makes it warmer. This makes it more alien. But also weaker. So we will choose warmer for now. I mean, warmer, maybe it's also just louder. Um, if you really want to know if you brief things and um, you can level them here and really check that you not just made it louder um, just solo it check it with and without the effect like this and if we would turn on the phaser I think we didn't really significantly change the level here but it's a little bit too loud and also I don't want to maybe not crush it as crazy into the compressor. Let's try check if we can down if we can download it. <laughs> we can download the master a bit. And there's some shots, I don't know if you noticed, which kind of like disappeared. Um, so we would need to fix that. So it's probably something in the LFO here. Here, probably this, this one here. That's the fine work anyways. I'm not a super huge fan of sequences. Um, so usually if I do that, in a track at some point that turned this just off and automate this by hand um, because then I really see where my notes are and I can just put the, the automation points there and it 
for me, it's easier than like fixing around here in that LFOs. But I guess we get a pretty quite cool alien sound. Um, thanks, Dash, for inspiration for the uh, Mars uh, thing. Um, but the concept is actually everywhere the same. And it works with everything. It works with plugs, pads and, and stuff. And let me explain the concept really quick. Um, so the thing is... So my explanation for this is why this actually creates that vocal type of sound is if you look for example here in the four month filter, this is probably what most of you guys know for creating vocal stuff. You see that kind of like resonant peaks. And as you can see here, that's the four month frequencies. And that's how our language works. So there's kind of like resonant peaks in certain frequencies. So if those kind of like frequencies are accentuated, we as humans, we are kind of like more sensitive to all these kind of like language specific frequencies. Um, so that's why, why we also perceive mids um, louder. If if you look, for example, at the Fletcher Monson curve. Um, so our kind of like brain is trained on listening to specific frequencies because it helps us in our survival. That, that's why we are perceiving those um, frequencies as vowels and as language. And by adding the distortion, the downsampling, we are creating those kind of like resonant peaks here, like, like calm filter looking peaks. Here. And I guess, and actually that's just a guess of mine why this works, is that those frequencies sometimes probably come close to some kind of like pattern, which is the same pattern or accentuating the same pattern like a vowel frequency. And then our brain just makes this up. And I think that's the really cool thing about this uh, technique is because we always we want in Psytrance we want to have that a little bit trippiness uh, thing. I guess um, that's the cool thing. If you bring something in your sound which is actually isn't a vocal but your brain perceives as a vocal, it really helps you to trip because it gives you that hallucina hallucination actually of voice of vocals in it. And I think that's a really cool and nice technique. And um, we created this sound more from scratch here, but you can try to apply this to sounds which already exist. And what I will do now, I will lock the chain because the distortion thing is the important thing. We can lock the effect. You can also save the effect, Greg, and apply it to other stuff, but we will lock it now. And then we will look through some pluck sounds. <laughs> I just brought a, like a minus 12 because I feel some of those sounds might be uh, a little bit higher pitched and I want to quickly map this so I can just turn it off and on if I want to switch an octave down. It already gets that vocal touch, obviously we would need to do some adjustments to it. So this is also cool, I guess. This is also cool. And with our chain, with locking that over, we're actually destroying a little bit the original um, chain of that sound. So that's why maybe some of those sounds we selected now didn't sound as good as it would have without the locking. But I just wanted to make that point that this distortion effect is actually creating that vocalish uh, thing. And I hope you enjoyed that video and let me know if you want to see more on sound design, um, my weak point to be honest. And um, because I'm actually a producer who uses a lot of sounds in, in my production, that's why I also cho have chosen this great sound from Dash to replicate because he's very experienced in that domain. And if you want to see more about my track, uh, how I finish it and how I do all the arrangements and story and how I select uh, maybe the sounds and stuff like that. I will do that more often in my membership areas so that you can basically stay with me and see the whole creation of kind of like a track. And I guess because I'm using a lot of sounds from packs and stuff, uh, it's, it will be pretty good for you to uh, watch this because then you can relate easier and maybe you can create similar things and 
um, get your own releases at uh, labels and stuff. And if you still want to work more on the basics of your sound, um, then you're also welcome to ask questions and stuff. So there's everything in it. Does it make it more human or more alien? Let me know in the comments.